When I was little, my father was famous. He was the greatest samurai in the empire. He cut off the heads of 131. Hey everybody, Jerry Williams, AKA Greater Sapien here. Thanks for stopping by. Today we look at numbers 160, 161, and 162 of Eric Dubay's 200 Proofs, The Earth is Not a Spinning Ball. Now I hate to disappoint you, but you can probably look at the runtime and figure out that each one of these isn't going to get very much time. The reason for that will become clear very soon. Number 160. It is impossible for rockets or any type of jet propulsion engines to work in the alleged non-atmosphere of vacuum space because without air atmosphere to push against, there's nothing to propel the vehicle forwards. Instead, the rockets and shuttles would be sent spinning around their own axis uncontrollably in all directions like a gyroscope. It would be impossible to fly to the moon or to go in any direction whatsoever, especially if gravity were real and constantly sucking you toward the closest, densest body. Rockets work in space. See these videos I've made here. Links are in the description. Number 161, if Earth were really a ball, there would be no reason to use rockets for flying into outer space anyway, because simply flying an airplane straight at an altitude for long enough should and would send you off into outer space. To prevent their airplanes from flying tangent to the ball, Earth pilots would have to constantly course correct downwards or else Within just a few hours, the average commercial airline traveling 500 miles per hour would find themselves lost in outer space. The fact that this never happens, artificial horizons remain level at pilots' desired altitudes and do not require constant downwards adjustment, proves the Earth is not a ball. This is another one that contains a debunk within it. Staying at the same altitude means staying at the same distance from the surface of the Earth. Artificial horizons adjust themselves to the surface of the Earth, and as long as the pilot stays true to the artificial horizon, they automatically adjust for the curvature of the Earth. By the way, this is just a rewording of so-called proof number 15, and barely a rewording at that. You can hop over to watch my number 15 debunk, or better yet, follow the links in the description to the Wolfie 6020 videos that drill down on the reality that debunks Dubay's claims here. 162, all NASA and other space agencies rocket launches never go straight up. Every rocket forms a parabolic curve, peaks out, and inevitably starts falling back to Earth. The rockets which are declared successful are those few which don't explode or start falling too soon but make it out of range of spectator view before crashing down into restricted waters and recovered. There's no magic altitude where rockets or anything else can simply go up, 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 and then suddenly just start free floating in space. This is all a science fiction illusion created by wires, green screens, dark pools, some permed hair, and zero G planes. Okay, this one we'll get into a bit. Rocket launches never go straight up, nor should they. It's funny that Dubay mentions science fiction here because this opinion of if what should happen is based on sci-fi movies, TV, and cartoons, where ships take off from Earth and head straight to other planets and stars. In reality, space travel requires more precision, calculation, and efficient use of resources than that would allow. All rockets launch craft into orbit around the Earth before going further into space. They get up into orbit, and then they can chill, not using up fuel, fine-tuning the craft's position and path, and then launching out of orbit on the precise trajectory needed. Dubay's claim that they all fall back to Earth is unsupported, but don't worry. He has the excuse that the craft all have gone out of the spectator's view and into restricted waters, so that's why he can't support it. No one claims that there is an altitude where rockets or anything else can simply go up, 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 and then suddenly start free-floating in space. That's something that Dubay just made up. During this portion of his video, Dubay shows encoding glitches and obvious post-processing effects in an attempt to claim that there are green screens being used when it's obviously not the case. 
Right now, there is an object floating right to my right here. It's been here the whole time. If I snap my fingers, it will appear like magic. No green screen needed. After this recording is gone, I'm just going to copy this empty space and paste it at the beginning of the video. And it's gone. As for wires, uh, that's just your unproven speculation. And I have videos debunking that as well. But tell me, even if rockets did not work in space, which they do, and if all rockets did crash back down to Earth, they don't. And if space stations used green screens and wires, they don't. If all that were the case, I'm still left with one question. How does that make the Earth not round? Maybe you came by to congratulate me on last night's victory.